Question one. The function is y equals 5x squared minus x. Can I get some agreement? Does that look good as a derivative? Yeah, I'm happy with that. I gave you a nice gentle uh, ease in. You just do term by term. That 2 multiplied by 5, reduce it by 1, everything looks good, I'm really happy. I'm not going to dwell on that at all. When you have a look at question 2, you get given inside the bracket something very similar to question 1. But we raise it to this 7th power. And raising it to such a high power means, I really don't want to expand this. I mean, in theory you could. But, you know, like the sun would set and you'd want to eat dinner. And you're like, I don't have time for this, right? So what rule, what do we call it? when you do this to it without having no expansion has taken place. What do we call it? There's two names. So you've got like lots of options. Anyone? Yeah. Say it again. Ah, now we, we have left it factorized, but there's a particular rule that we use when we leave it in factorized form to differentiate just like that. Does anyone know? It starts with a C. So chain rule is like the lazy short name of it. The other name, which is actually quite handy, you may or may not have encountered it, but I'm going to write it down. And if you've never heard this before, you should also write it down. It's also called the function of a function rule. Now, the reason why you may not have heard this name much is because, well, chain rule is so much easier and faster to say. But I'm going to tell you in about six minutes why this is actually really helpful to know as a secondary name. Okay? Does it look good? Does that look like the derivative for question two? Happy? 7 times, this is going to be 3x squared, so 7 times 3 gives you the 21. Reduce the power, I'm also pretty happy with that. Okay, now question 3. I've thrown a curveball at you. For 3 and also for 5, before you differentiate, there's something you should do first. What did you do for question 3? You can also see it in the way that the, um, the solution has been written. What was changed? Anyone? Michael? <coughs> Very good. So I've given it to you as a fraction, and this has been changed into an index. Hi, Mrs. Ferguson. Are you after someone? Yes. Now, even though I'm very happy that it's just answers here, I actually would like to see that working here. And if you don't have this line of working as your one before this, please check it because it's a really important line. Rewriting this in index form, you would write it as f of t, and I just threw another variable at you just to see if you're okay with that, is equal to what? How would we rewrite that? Any takers? Yeah, go ahead. Alright, nicely done. Okay, so this is the way that we would write this in index form. The way I used to remember it is that when you cross the line, you change the sign. So a negative index there is, is division. Okay, And then from here, I can then go to the next line being, alright, let's go and differentiate. Right? Does it look good? See that minus sign? Do you see where it came from? It came from here. Right? Where did this 2 come from? Because it, uh, it has, already has a minus one, it's a minus thing one again. Yeah, very good. Every time we differentiate, the power is going down. It's going down, it's going down. It's gone from negative one down to negative two. Okay? That's it. Happy times. And of course, um, we've gone back to, it was really nice to go back to fractional form because that's what they gave it to us in rather than in widow negative index form. Okay? Question four. This again, just like question two, there's like a, a rule behind it. Does anyone remember what it's called? Product rule, because it's written as something times something. How else could you have done it? If you couldn't remember product rule, how else could you have done that question? Out. Yeah, just expand it out and you'll get something just like question one and you're good to go. Okay. Now I walked around and I saw a few people, wrong colour, I saw a few people struggling a little bit to remember the product rule. So if you've got something times something else, right? We designate each of the products, we give them a name. Call one U, call one V. And then your derivative, if you're differentiating this, whatever this happens to be, the way I learnt it, which is kind of just nice and easy to say, is that it's a vuv, v u dash plus u v dash. You just say it aloud, vuv, which just sounds ridiculous and will hopefully help you remember it for next time, right? So you know what your v is. You can work out what u dash is by looking at this. Thanks, mate. Now you're fine. Take it. And then you can work out the other pieces as you go, okay? Do you end up with this after you collect all your like terms? Yeah? Uh, I'm getting some like... Can I get a show of hands? Who got this? Yes? Did you write it? <laughs> well, how about we... Let's... You, you, did, you, you got agreement though. Okay, well, I'm not getting convincing... Who got a different answer? Hands up. 
Sounds like we should do this one together. Okay, let's have a go. What do we got here? So I'm going to write it up the top. Hopefully this gives some space. So I'm differentiating x squared minus 3 times x cubed plus x. Does that look right? Did I get it right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just writing the question. Hopefully I got it right. I'm going to do my v u dash and then my u v dash. I'm going to do it all in line. Hopefully we can get this right. But to help me, if you don't have like different colored pens in your, um, in your pencil case, can I highly encourage you to get some because it will help you see through what you're doing a lot more easily. Okay? So here it comes. v and then u dash. This is v. I'm just writing it as given. Can you tell me what u dash is? Differentiation of u. Differentiation of u, the derivative of u, which in this case is just 2x to v u dash. Done. Okay? So then I'm going to add in, do it in the other order. I've done v u dash. Let's do u v dash. Here's u. No changes. And then v dash, you're going to have to help me again this time. Open a bracket, what do we get? 3x squared plus 1. Are you happy with that? Okay, now, I'm just going to pause for a minute. At this point, you've differentiated. Like, that's all I, that's all I asked you to do, right? So strictly speaking, you're kind of done now, but I know reflexively most of you are like, what a mess though, right? Now, someone asked me before, like, how should I simplify this, okay? Now, I just want to put a peg in the sand. We'll return to this question multiple times in the next couple of weeks, right? This word, simplify. Simplify means different things in different contexts. And that's really a little bit confusing. For example, this is expanded. Would you agree? No brackets anymore. This is some version of factorized was the word we used before. Which one is simpler, expanded or factorized? Hmm. Now, I, I'm interested a lot of you sort of instinctively go to factorized even though this is expanded and that looks okay to me. Short answer is, and we're going to return to this and I need you to think about why, sometimes it is simpler to be expanded and other times it's simpler to be factorized. Why is it one or the other? We'll come back to that question a bit later on. I am going to expand here so that I can collect like terms. Can you see that might be useful to me? Right? Let's have a look here. 2x to the 4 plus 2x squared. Does that look okay up there? This one's going to take me a little more work, but it's still doable, right? I'll do x squared first. So that gives me 3x to the 4 plus x squared. And then I'll do the minus 3 now. So minus 9x squared minus 3. How do you feel about my expansion? Does it look okay to you? Have I missed anything? You're right. Okay, again, power of colors. Let's look for the like terms here, right? Is there anything alike with 2x to the 4? There is, right? Can you tell me what term it is? There's, there's a 3x to the 4 right there, okay? So does that check out with what we were hoping for? Cool, I'm happy with that, good. x cubed terms. x cubed terms. Do I have any x cubed terms? I didn't catch any. So it looks like something's gone on here, which makes me wonder, okay, what happened with our expansion? Clearly something was happening there that I need to watch for. What's next? x squared. One, two, three x squared terms. When you collapse them together, how many are you getting? There's three here, take away nine minus six x squared. I'm starting to write things down or rather think things that I haven't written. Five x to the four minus six x squared. What's left? Just the take away three? I'm done. Okay. Now it's worth noting, right? You can see this minus nine x squared, that came from somewhere, right? So obviously this two x cubed must have been something to do with a factorization or expansion that went a little bit wrong. And I'm highlighting this, I don't know who did this by the way, uh, who wrote it, and I don't actually need to know. But for us, mathematically, it is just as important, if not more, off you go, you're fine, to be able to spot an error and be able to back our way out of it and know what's right, as well as to just get the right answer first off, right? So this is really important for us to go through this. All right, let's do the rest of it just a little bit quicker. Question five. I said we had to rewrite this. 
square root of x, do the same thing as you did in question three. What is that trick that we pulled? Say it again louder. Say it again louder. Okay, we can write it as index form, x to the power of a half, like so. Okay, so I'm going to put that actually in here because this means differentiate whatever's about to come, right? And then do we get minus root x on 2? Now, this is really interesting because again, these errors really help us understand. This is a very common error. I see this all the time. So whoever wrote this, you're in good company, okay? What do you think was the error that got made here? Any suggestions? What do you think? Yeah, did it the, didn't reciprocate, like what's going on with this, right? So in fact, when we subtract one, when I differentiate this, right? Look at how close a result we get, okay? That power comes out the front. That actually looks really good. Half. But then I reduce the power by one. And that looks like a square root of x, right? It is a square root of x, but it's a square root of x on the denominator, yeah? So in fact, we don't have to do much to this to change it to be right, right? I think this should belong on the bottom. Is there another change we need to make? Yeah, that, that well, yes, the one up the top. And then that minus sign, actually, we don't need to worry about. We're good. It's like this minus sign. It's that negative index, okay? All right, happy times. And then I left, finally enough, the easiest one to last. Are you happy with that derivative? Cool? I was actually surprised when I said like, hey guys, come up and write something on board. I was surprised someone didn't just go to this one first and just said, I'm done, okay?